Today we're going to talk about the charging system of a motorcycle or in that fact a car or any really motorized vehicle that requires a battery to run. So I'm going to show you what I've done to my bike uh, but first I'll explain what went wrong with my bike to have to make these changes and also go over the basics of a charging system as well. So So there are three main components to a charging system. You have the stator, the regulator rectifier, and the battery. Now, why does a bike need a battery? It requires spark from the spark plugs to light the fuel. The spark, or the energy to create that spark, comes from the battery. So, starting with the stator, which is the spinning component inside the engine that creates the electrical charge or the electrical current, that current gets sent to the regulator rectifier and then gets from the regulator rectifier to the battery to keep it charged while the bike is running as well as to power all the auxiliary components such as the lights, blinkers, the dash, everything else. So the stator works on a principle called induction. Now I'll show you a picture of the stator. It has all these coils or cores which are magnets wrapped in conductive material or wires. So when this is spinning, it creates magnetic fields which then move electrons in these coils and sends charge up the wires into the stator or into the regulator rectifier. The regulator rectifier, two names because it does two things. The rectifier component converts the AC charge or, or three-phase AC current uh, hence, you'll see in a moment why there's three wires coming out of stator into DC, 12 volts DC. The regulator part is what keeps it at 12 volts uh, because the charge or the voltage coming out of a stator varies according to engine speed. So the faster the bike's engine is spinning, the higher the voltage coming out of the stator. So after this three-phase AC current with varying voltage gets regulated and rectified to a consistent 12 volts in DC current, it then gets sent to the battery. Uh, but it gets sent to the battery with a 30 amp, or in my particular bike's case, a 30 amp fuse in between in case something goes wrong and one of these components fails and sends too much current to the battery. You will notice something's wrong because Either the battery will be losing charge because itself is faulty or the regulator rectifier is either over or under charging the battery or the stator itself, some part of it is broken or short circuited and it's not sending the required uh, current or voltage. So in my particular bike's case, being a uh, Triumph Daytona, everyone should know that the regulator rectifier is terrible on these bikes or was between the uh, 2006 to 2008 models. They used an older style called a, an SCR or a shunt rectifier. The 2009 onwards bikes were then changed to a newer MOSFET style. Um, apparently, my bike being in 2011 shouldn't have had this issue, but it failed anyway. So the point of this video is to show you what parts I replaced it with and do a little bit of a show and tell. So let's get started. So I've just set up a little rig here with a uh, multimeter. And before we even do anything, if you just want to see whether or not there's an issue before you start pulling apart any of the fairings or the battery or any of the charging system out, uh, this is a very quick two minute test that you can do to find out uh, whether or not you should inquire further. Okay, so we've got the multimeter. We're just gonna hook up the leads to the positive and negative of the battery. So there goes negative. Okay, so there's three things we're gonna test. The bike in its completely off state, we're gonna get that voltage, call that voltage one. So we've got 13 and a half. Turn the ignition on, but not start the bike. Call that voltage two, that should be lower than the first voltage, so we've got 12.9. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the bike and we're gonna check for the third voltage, which should be higher than the first two voltages. 
uh, we're going to rev it a bit and the whole point of the regular rectifier is that as the engine speed increases the voltage is supposed to be stable just saw was that the first voltage was the current charge state of the battery, uh, 13 and a half volts. Turn the ignition on, so you're now powering the dash, the headlights, the fuel pump and the other auxiliary systems. So it's using some of that charge, you get a voltage drop. The point of the state of spinning and charging the system is that the voltage is supposed to be higher than the voltage of the battery in its uh, resting state. So that way voltage goes into the battery. If the voltage was lower, in other words, in a broken state or a broken regulator rectifier uh, state, it's taking charge from the battery or sucking that battery. And that's why you get that battery drain or the non-starting bikes or any of those other issues. So now I'm just gonna show you some of the upgrades I've done to my bike. I've replaced the regulator rectifier with a Shindengen FH020 model, uh, something from some form of Honda. So it's way overkill for this bike. I've also had the stator rewound because uh, there was a short circuit on one of the phases of my stator, uh, causing the voltages to be different on all three phases. Replace the regulator rectifier just in case, but when I was revving it before I replaced all of that, the voltage was actually spiking as the engine speed increased. So that was probably broken as well. So underneath here is where the stator is and then you'll see this a little wire or three wires coming out of it that then comes up and goes somewhere in your wiring harness around into the regulator rectifier. So in my case I've changed it. This is a regulator rectifier and here are the three wires coming in. If there we go, one, two, three. Now the order of those wires don't really matter, but it comes in, gets regulated to DC, oh sorry, regulated to 12 volts and rectified to DC, and then comes out in your positive and negative. So the negative goes and connects to the ground, which in this case is right there. And the positive follows a little bit further, splits here, comes into, if I can get it out, into this 30 amp fuse, which uh, actually I'll be replacing this today. You can see the exposed wires there. And then into the battery. So you notice that this is all custom wiring. I've actually bypassed the harness because some of the, the connectors or the plugs were actually burnt out on my bike. And ever since I've done that, it has been running amazingly.